Hey, uh, welcome back to the third session on UCSD training. Uh, in this training, we're going to start a new CSD from scratch. Now, if you have seen the previous two sessions, uh, first one was kind of overview, what it does, what is the purpose of UCSD director. Uh, second session was a kind of demonstration and um, how the user will interface, what is the benefit to the user, and uh, what kind of magic it provides to the you know user, the quick provisioning. Um, if you just, uh, I would probably recommend go over if you have not gone through those. Uh, before jumping into this one. Uh, this is uh, more of a deployment uh, phase. Um, so you have decided now you are going to deploy that uh, in customer environment or you, your environment. What do you need to do? Um, again, like any other um, kind of uh, software management software these days, it comes in the OVA format um, yeah, for VMware and also other um, Hyper-V or KVM, they have kind of similar format uh, uh, Cisco provides for this software. Uh, so we'll go into the website and check what are the uh, options we have, what you should download. Uh, sometimes it can be confusing ex actually what exactly you should download for your uh, purpose. Of course, read through the UCS data install and upgrade guide. Uh, I'll also show that uh, then uh, three prerequisites you should check. Um, first thing is check the support metrics, completed metrics document. That's very vital. Um, sometimes uh, maybe you have uh, decided you uh, kind of uh, manage uh, NetApp, EMC or whatever, UCS, and that correct version, the one uh, you have or the customer have, is not supported for some reason. If it is too advanced, maybe ECSD team is still taking to catch up, or if it is too old, you need to upgrade that. So I would highly recommend go over the support metrics and check each and every uh, firmware, hardware, everything is supported, whatever you intend to manage. Uh, next is you have to have kind of admin access to all those things you're going to manage. Now, um, this can be sometimes challenge, um, like I kind of faced in the customer environment, like um, storage team says, no, we are not going to give you access. Okay, that's fine. So we need a kind of level of access that should be able to do all those tasks. Uh, again, you have to probably uh, convince that uh, or the, uh, your management has to convince this is not taking any other's job. So um, they're going to do the job through the UCS director and uh, the access level they give. Uh, that will kind of uh, uh, start from the UCS director and send to their uh, managed devices. And using that access level, uh, UCSD will you know do the work for them. So um, you have to have an access to all those uh, end devices you're going to manage. Um, then, of course, there need to be a supported hypervisor to deploy. At this moment, there are, I think, um, VMware, um, Hyper-V, and also KVM, uh, Red Hat uh, uh, VM solutions. So you have uh, all these three um, supported hypervisor. Um, then, then the required uh, Ports open, IP ports, uh, and there's a document. Uh, again, uh, everything has documents. Um, so you can probably, I'll look through the document, show that what the ports required. And after that, there is a vital decision to make. Uh, what kind of um, deployment it should go, single node or multi-node? Uh, it is uh, kind of depends on the deployment scale you're going to deploy. And from the um, Cisco, they have a guideline up to 5,000 VM you have, if you manage, uh, you should uh, consider single node. If you can go to single node, I would recommend to stay to the single node. Single node means the single VM that has all the uh, different components of UCSD in one box. It's easier to manage, less complex um, if you can manage. But if it goes above 5000 and you have a scalability issue, by all means, go to multi-node. Uh, but again, I'll just highlight that multi-node is not for HA. It's not giving a you know HA capability. For uh, HA, uh, Cisco recommends that you take the advantage of the HA capability of the hypervisor itself, your VMware, your Hyper-V, or your KVM. So uh, they, they don't also intend to adopt this you know, um, uh, HA anytime future. So um, they kind of think it's not a, a super critical. Uh, if everything goes fine, everything uh, runs fine. Um, so they're not uh, kind of inclined to have a you know kind of uh, HA model uh, heart beating 
and they kind of if one goes down other comes up no they don't kind of do there is a workaround you could do there is a I'll uh, probably talk about later on that uh, but uh, for now official stand is uh, the HA should be from the hypervisor and for scalability uh, there is multi node you can go so I will uh, my demonstration everything on single node and I'll probably cover a few slides on the hyper multi node uh, what are the things you should take care of and what you should know about multi node next is uh, think uh, okay let's um, assume that we kind of decided going to the single node um, and what is the VM requirement? Again, it, these things are on the website. Uh, I'll probably go up the website and show you. Have a look at that. So CPU, uh, just it's more CPU as in more RAM, pretty standard. And uh, the reservation is important. So this has to be reserved on your VMware resources. So it's not competing with other uh, resources. And also, in addition, there's a recommendation then if you can, uh, CPU resources more than or equal to 3000 megahertz or memory mega mode or equal to uh, 4 gigabyte so these things um, if you see the cpu uh, is consistently high definitely you should uh, kind of look into that okay now let's go into the uh, cisco website and have a look Um, apologize for my slow internet connection um, support I'm sure you are familiar if you're watching this video you must uh, be familiar with the Cisco website and also downloading way uh, so UCS director uh, you have to have an account um, I have an account uh, of my own And those who are new to Cisco, uh, again, uh, account is a free one. So you should be able to um, get an, uh, just register and get an account. And I would like to go to the latest one. There are uh, various versions. So I just want to go to the 6.0, which is the latest at this time, um, April 2017. So now once you come here, there are various versions and it can be kind of confusing which one you need. Before you uh, kind of download your actual uh, OVA, uh, what does uh, Cisco is release a you know, main release like 6.0, 5.0 and then in between the update patch like you know update 001, 002 depending on the you know, customer feedback or any bug so um, and also there are two components one is the ECS director itself other one is the bare metal agent um, I have not talked about bare metal agent it's uh, uh, required when you deploy a bare metal servers like you know uh, deploy ECS blade server uh, those kind of stuff uh, so I will um, cover this one once I uh, go into the uh, workflow and uh, provisioning a bare metal server. So you can see there are different patch. You don't need the patch uh, means right at this stage. It means if you want to go and see 01, uh, there is a patch. Uh, uh, so the one you need, this is for Hyper-V, uh, Hyper-V GA. Uh, this is for the VMware. So this is for the uh, bare metal agent. and Okay, there are also a um, mm, few components for the developers or maybe if you want to use PowerShell. Uh, you can download these things from this UCSD GUI also, but also the option is here like Clopia uh, script. Those who are kind of interested in uh, developing code uh, or customize this one, I would definitely recommend to get the uh, Clopia uh, script. It's a JavaScript with Clopia library. That's all it is. Uh, open automation if you want to integrate something new which is not in the Cisco UCSD uh, so op auto open automation is an option again uh, we'll talk about that later rest API uh, SDK Java dog uh, bare metal agent patch upgrade patch uh, Clopia script and the last one is uh, VMware OVA 6.0 so it's around 5 gig um, so you download this one and on top of that you have to download the patch uh, whatever the latest is, uh, you can download the patch and uh, we, this too you need a uh, bare metal to start with. Once you download, it's pretty straightforward. Um, go to the vCenter and deploy it. Um, uh, as soon as you deploy, um, you will need some IP addresses and usual stuff. Um, let's go back to the slides. Um, once you deploy that to VM, uh, they will have two access. Um, 
One is um, uh, your uh, shell admin, which is the SSH access. Uh, means uh, you can do few stuff, admin stuff there. Uh, end of the day, it's a CentOS box inside, and it's kind of on top of that. There is a uh, Glopia uh, layer on the on top of that. So uh, if you are a Linux guy, uh, you can access to the root, and you can you know run usual enough uh, Linux commands. So uh, for SSH access and shell admin is change me. There's the username password. Of course, you should change straight away. And then the GUI is admin admin. Uh, there are a few stuff you need to do. Uh, we'll go over that. Uh, let's go back to the your uh, access. Uh, sorry, uh, shell admin access and show um, there. Now my setup is already done. Uh, it's been in the in the lab for quite some time. So. Uh, SSH uh, shell admin and that's the username password. Hopefully my password is correct. Yeah, you could. Okay, um, this is very useful, especially for admins um, if you're starting new here. <coughs> so uh, this gives you a lot of the things you can do what you cannot do in the GUI. Uh, one of the things is like display services. Of course, this uh, shell admin password. I won't go over that. Uh, so the services, see all the services has to be up, of course. Uh, but sometimes if the service is even up, uh, you might may not be able to access the GUI. So there is a kind of a time difference between the services comes up and then you know um, the GUI comes up. So around eight, six to eight minutes. So if the service is up, you can get in the GUI. So just have, have your patience. Uh, it will come probably in uh, four to five minutes time. Uh, you can stop the services, start services from here. Uh, database, um, can, there's a MySQL database. I probably didn't speak about that. Uh, there's a MySQL database inside the, um, which is the heart of the system. Um, everything you do uh, on the UCS director actually is pulled from the uh, your MySQL database. It doesn't pull uh, straight from the live system. So there's a system task that runs. Uh, system task that runs uh, and kind of pulls the information from your um, managed system like your UCS, like your NetApp, uh, those kind of thing. Uh, if your uh, task requires uh, kind of uh, real time, there is an option you can do in the workflow. You can add a task which will pull the information uh, right before you run the task. Um, rest is kind of uh, straightforward, self-explanatory, pings, um, uh, your time sync show version so that's one thing you might want to check if you have upgraded the patch or something so just to make sure which version here is 6.0.10 version we're running right now if you want to import your certificate yeah like um, any other your appliance or uh, software so you could do that and you use these two options uh, if you want to change your IP address or something like that that's you do that uh, 15 is uh, network um, display network details um, now, in the old age, uh, there was an option for bare metal. I think uh, at this time, you don't need that. You can do it from the GUI itself. But when I started working with ECSD, I think two and a half years back, uh, we had to do through this one, like add a bare metal agent uh, through these options. Infrastructure law is very important. Like um, something is always happening on the uh, your UCS director, and it kind of shows what, what's happening. Like so. If you um, just run some task, uh, you should be able to see uh, your task related information here. Again, we'll probably go back to this one later. So, but that's uh, very important uh, logs. Uh, uh, now, <laughs> apply patch, of course, uh, probably you'll need, you'll need a FTP server to apply a patch. Just keep that in mind. So um, you have to have an uh, FTP server configured uh, within the access of UCS director to patch. So you have to upload your patch file into the FTP server, and then you have to give the address here. And before that, you have to also stop the services. So um, just keep that in mind. Shutdown appliances reboot manage root access. So you can uh, configure your root access here, and then also um, yeah, log into the root uh, from here. So if I give, I call it already kind of configured the root access. Uh, yes. So I can probably go get my root access password. Uh, Oh, that's wrong password. Okay. Oh, 
All right, let's see. It doesn't look like. Okay, um, we can uh, reset the password if you want to. Let me reset the password. I'll just pause this recording and reset the password and come back. I don't remember the password. Okay, um, I have uh, reset the password and uh, I'm here uh, with the root access. Like, uh, so you can run the usual um, Linux commands. So this IP address. Uh, I'll cover this one later. Uh, this is kind of deep troubleshooting. So we're back here and uh, we, you can manage or disable the root access uh, from here. So we'll just disable for now. And then thereafter, of course, a multi-node setup. Um, if you want to configure multi-node, you probably use this, um, your options. Uh, and kind of configure different uh, your nodes. So uh, I will cover on a few slides that were the options you have for multi-node. Clean up patch files, collect logs. Um, we can also collect logs uh, from the GUI. It's four o'clock. Um, four o'clock uh, in Melbourne. Yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for the shell admin. Uh, it can be very useful uh, for your um, admin on day-to-day -day management troubleshooting. So um, I find it uh, very kind of uh, helpful, especially services. Uh, you could quickly see the services which is on, which is, you know, need to restart or if there's in trouble with some services. Okay, then uh, next we'll go over the kind of uh, system setup. Um, you kind of uh, deploy that, uh, check all the services running. Now try to get in the GUI. Uh, again, I said that uh, initial start, it may have to wait for a few minutes. Don't get impatient, like, you know, uh, maybe maximum five seven depending on the your disk io uh, if it is a lab it might take longer uh, once you can log in uh, you should um, your uh, see something like uh, this like after you use the admin admin username password uh, this should pop up saying that okay guided setup what it is at this stage is uh, it is trying to add all the manage um, your devices into the system. Uh, if you want to manage uh, Flexport uh, configuration, like say, go see for this one. Um, so you have these are the things it does, like create a port, uh, add a UCSM account as a NetApp account. Uh, if there's a Nexus, you add that uh, add a VM account. Now keep in mind that. If you select a Flexport, if something you try to add which is not Flexport supported, you know, CVD uh, or reference architecture, then uh, you won't see that on that, you know, uh, kind of adding list. So um, you have to be uh, very mindful that um, all the devices you're trying to add are under the Flexport has to be within the Flexport reference architecture. Uh, if you use generic, you should be able to add anything. So um, you can guide through this one. So uh, this is this will kind of help you to build the initial setup. Okay, I think I've been uh, off for quite some time. Let's just uh, log out and log back in. Uh, I'll just pause the video for a second. Okay, I'm just logged back in. So uh, Flexpod. Um, Submit. I'm not going to add right now, but um, select for configuration, create and add devices, and then it will go through each step like creating a pod. Um, what is pod? Uh, <clears throat> now, UCS worked on the concept of sites and pod. So, for example, you have a site in San Jose, which is a headquarter. And you have sites in different places around the globe. Uh, now, you can manage all these sites uh, in Bangalore or in uh, your uh, Mexico or somewhere around the globe from a UCS director uh, set up on the uh, your San Jose. Uh, if your vCenter is in San Jose and your cluster is in uh, maybe uh, Bangalore, uh, you should be able to manage under the same UCS director. So um, unless you're trying to deploy a your bare metal server or something which needs huge data. So um, for the concept of uh, doing the design, you'll have to uh, kind of keep that in mind that if the 
uh, your data your uh, virtual center or the management component is say in the overseas you still can manage it from a single ECS director you do not need to deploy each site one ECS director uh, it is possible to manage from a single site to different your, your uh, managed devices so um, first of all you'll have to create a site and the pod it assumes that you have the pod site already done uh, otherwise it will ask you to add make one see it's kind of uh, pod already so there is already pod there uh, this is not a new setup so otherwise it would ask for that so uh, let's go over the kind of manual way of doing it that way I can probably show you what uh, exactly needs to be done so this is the tab you need to be familiar for administration so these are the all tasks uh, we should know what uh, it means and what we can do uh, with these tabs guided setup as I said like if you come here if you miss something you can you know start from here uh, licenses uh, I would not cover much on the licenses you probably need to talk to your sales team um, it goes par uh, physical server one server has got 50 VMs allowed something like that and you need a base license and you know those kind of things so uh, you uh, can use a 60 days um, your trial license so within 60 days you can do anything um, so uh, once you download I think that for now it comes for uh, with the setup so you don't need to have another separate license you can run for 60 days uh, just to explore the uh, systems after 60 days uh, you won't be able to provision anything pretty much uh, you can still see and you can log in and do stuff but um, you can really you know um, provision uh, something new um, license and systems this is the very important part <laughs> before you even start uh, kind of deploying this one uh, you would um, sh you should uh, give a heads up to the mail team that uh, UCS director does send email for notification say um, user has uh, requested a VM as we showed in the last one so uh, the email uh, will be sent if there's an approval process to the approver saying that hey uh, he needs a VM can you approve it so that's an email uh, there is no mailbox required it's just an SMTP relay server so that SMTP server uh, has to allow uh, email to uh, pass through that one so your mail server team uh, needs to configure that for you uh, this email address doesn't matter you can put anything you like it doesn't have to be mailbox uh, and the server IP of course um, so um, uh, this is the IP address uh, that uh, your mail server needs to allow uh, the email uh, go through from here uh, this is uh, important uh, in terms of really uh, going moving to production because you need this uh, back and forth email communication Mm, system setup these are pretty default like you can modify this stuff but, but just uh, uh, one thing uh, to uh, kind of uh, understand that if you increase the timing or you know uh, reduce the frequency it's going to stress your, your your VM so you have to monitor that if you need that by all means go ahead but uh, you have to also check that how it's performing infrastructure system parameters so one of the th uh, how many days you want you can increase this one depending on your requirement um, advanced controls okay one of the things I kind of mentioned at the initial um, I think the first or second lecture that uh, management of VM so um, a VM gets deployed by the users users uh, using it well and good uh, maybe he needs for only four hours and after that he doesn't need it so the way you see the manage if he leases this VM for four hours after four hours it shuts down and then the inactivity period starts and you can have a setup on the inactivity period like after you know maybe 30 days it will be deleted automatically uh, but there is a kind of a safe lock here uh, unless you enable this one delete inactive VMs based on the VDC policy uh, it's not gonna happen so um, it doesn't tell you at the time or oh, hey you didn't do that I would think it'd be uh, I mean, useful if you do that I kind of learned it in a hard way so you have to take that and other things you can see that what are the functions you don't have to modify this much um, but uh, if you want you can always do that um, next one is service provider feature uh, there's a slide I kind of kept it for this 
So um, if it is a service provider environment, so you'd like uh, to have different tenants, uh, maybe give access and uh, they have their own admin and they manage their own resources and VM. So that's when you enable that feature that needs a reboot. So you have your shared resources with all the compute and other stuff. Then you have a super admins and then you can have a you know um, group admins, uh, subgroup admins who can manage those resources. So this is only for a, a service provider environment. Uh, again, that needs a reboot. Um, so that goes here. Uh, next is system task. This is a very um, common place you need to come back and forth. Uh, so let's give an example. Um, you just made a change in the ECS. You make a new service build template and you're trying to configure from here. And once you come here, you don't see that. Why? Because uh, as I said before, uh, UCS director does not query the UCS system every time you do it. I, I kind of ask him to do something. So it goes into his MySQL database and see that what is the latest here. So here's a inventory. So you can see that uh, inventory collector. So that uh, runs every hour. Again, you can kind of uh, manage tasks this one. Uh, reduce the time okay that, that's the uh, one hour two hours and then you can also maybe say you can put it uh, zero and then you know minutes every 15 minutes you could do that so that's a service and uh, uh, this is a very important task because that's what UCC does it skips polling every some time to um, maybe a storage maybe your UCS and it gets all the information, you know, gets into his MySQL database. Now this is, these are the services can be offloaded to another not because it takes huge resources from, you know, on the VM. So um, if you have a, a big environment, uh, they'll be huge. Think about like it's pulling, you know, all those systems with huge uh, managed devices every time, every few minutes. So you can offload this not this VM on a different VM, which does only these things, you know, just pull and pull the information, get the inventory. Uh, and also there's two things, other is the monitoring. It also for inventory, also for monitoring, how the performance is doing, how was the response time. Those things also kind of pull from the system. So uh, if you have done something on the end, managed end devices manually, bypassing the UCSD, uh, if UCSD does anything, it will be reflected straight away. So that's that's done. But if you do something by passing, UCSD doesn't know that you have done something. So you have come back and run the task, and then you will see that you know information right away. So this is system task. So each like devices you add to the system will be having some kind of task, and it will keep running uh, uh, frequently. So once you adjust this one, if you do, then you have to keep in mind that you know uh, yeah, it's going to you're going to stress that VM. And accordingly, you kind of give uh, resources to that. System task policy. So that's where we kind of say that this is only one node right now. So, but if you have a multi node, you kind of split the node. Okay, service node here, maybe a monitoring database. Uh, there's a two databases on the uh, your MySQL. One is for the inventory, which keeps all the inventory information, and the one is for monitoring. So monitoring is just you know performance monitoring how it is doing so trending those kind of things so there's two separate database there so you could split them into two separate your your vm so there you go service node you can just run the services monitoring database your um, inventory database and this one is primary node so there are four types of node in the ECS system uh, and then user roles uh, here i'm going to give some uh, like any other your software, there is a role, right? Like vCenter has got a different role, admin role, operation roles, uh, storage admin, network, those kind of things. So same thing here, it comes with built-in your roles. Uh, the main one is uh, uh, your end user. Uh, operator role is kind of, you know, um, a, uh, operations and ser services infrastructure, admin infrastructure. That's the role all the admins belong to. But if you want, uh, you can create uh, your own role, right?
and then uh, there's two basic role type one is the admin role and the end user end user with the consumer of the like your developers they are the end user uh, or the anyone who kind of uh, consume the resources the end users and then you can go there next and then you can choose the options what he may have access or he doesn't have access and if you choose admin so you can select what uh, actually he can or he cannot do service nodes uh, service node is critical uh, for ECS director as I said like it kind of does a lot of the hard work now when you kind of increase the size in multi node um, from small medium large the number of service nodes increases uh, you cannot have more than one um, database server uh, means uh, inventory and one monitoring that's all but you can increase the number of the service nodes like for a small one i think it's two uh, medium one it's three and large one is six service nodes uh, that way you can you know um, offload those uh, your load to those uh, your uh, dedicated uh, vms but for this just only one single node so this is doing all the work email template like sometimes uh, the email that goes back and forth you like to kind of customize depending on your requirement so you can uh, clone that I like so you can first of all preview the template what is going to happen user approval workflow so this is the template looks like and there are some variables it will pull from the information from the system so you can clone that and then you can modify the script here and once you do that then you can save it and then make that a primary So you can you can see the kind of categories um, you can do and then set as the primary email template here. Orchestration policy. Uh, this is the policy how the email goes back and forth based on the orchestration uh, where the email goes. Uh, I won't go into that. Application category. You can um, there are some kind of default categories there, and there's an app code. Uh, you can use it for doing the orchestration. You can make your own code and then uh, kind of category of uh, servers and then you can apply that code into the orchestration policy and lastly you can uh, alert like you know system alerts if there's a critical uh, thing happens so it sends an email to someone else somebody on the system so yeah that's it uh, there are different uh, this is mainly for CCD servers um, and uh, several groups and uh, the system so that's the kind of understanding of that uh, you know system uh, settings. There are a lot of them. Now, uh, if I keep going down, uh, that's probably next is LDAP integration. Uh, again, that's probably very important because you don't want to maintain a separate user database here. Um, so you'd like to probably integrate into the uh, LDAP. So before I go to that, um, I would probably hmm, go into the users and groups. By default, you have this admin account that's created, uh, and uh, they, they actually these are the groups created later. So this is the default group that's created, and you can create um, means groups here, uh, and then you can add the users that you can import from LDAP. Uh, so uh, say if you have a group here for which is end user. And you give them certain, you know, uh, access to uh, certain uh, your catalogs, and from the Active Directory, you can have a um, your uh, group security group, and you can bind to that group. Uh, that also possible. So uh, this group here bind to that one. And how do you do that? I'll just go over. Uh, probably you can find out on the you know website pretty easily, but um, it might be helpful. Um, I have seen it helpful. Uh, then you have got users. Uh, these are the local users. Uh, it's not integrated with the LDAP, so um, you can see that uh, groups are created here. Uh, so I have created one user, user one. Uh, that's me. Okay, and uh, current online login page. I'll go over this one later. Authentication preference is LDAP or local. Uh, that's what it is pretty much saying. Uh, 
LDAP first uh, or lo local sec uh, local first and LDAP fallback. Single sign-on. A uh, OneLogin.com. There's a kind of in you know, a provider which does um, single uh, sign-on, so you can subscribe to their service, and they, you can enable it here. SCP um, user configuration um, and then password group. Those are actually self-explanatory. Um, and again, I would just wanted to highlight that um, this has um, a huge uh, scope. If you want to cover this one, probably it will take months. So I'm not going to cover each and every kind of uh, button and knobs. Uh, so I'll just go over the uh, main points which you need as an admin. And as you go along, you will find it, kind of find other things um, anyway. So um, let's go into the LDAP integration. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it used to be very clunky before, uh, but I think there's a lot of feedback on that and they kind of make it pretty straightforward now. Um, this, you just you know have a LDAP uh, information you add it here. I don't have an LDAP server, but um, uh, there are two protocols supported: Open LDAP and uh, Maximum Active Directory. Uh, so um, you can see it's a, a server you know port number. If you make SSL, uh, it will change uh, to six three six, and then domain name is a name which have access to the schema. No, sorry, access to the all the usernames. Uh, read only so that sometimes the activity admin is very kind of you know not uh, happy about uh, the aspect of um, pull all the information so um, this is not gonna make any change to the schema or anything on the active directory it just read only account which just reads all the information uh, from the active directory and uh, you can do it how frequently um, you want to uh, frequent uh, your sync or maybe you can do a manual one also so I can't really pass through this uh, screen, uh, there, but there are four things you need to do. One is LDAP, this information. Second one is search base. Normally it's a good idea, just put this, um, your security groups into an OU. Uh, and then uh, you configure that, uh, do you want to bring all the, your um, users or groups, and then the role, role, role mapping, like, you know, uh, the security group in the activity, what is the group on the, your UCS directory. So I have a few slides on that. Um, I might want to show that here. So this is a kind of um, setup. So you can see I've given it's called VMware and give activity information, um, username, password, all those kind of stuff, and uh, frequency is one hour. Next one is uh, you search base. Where is going to search? So OU, uh, here is the um, groups. And there is an OU name um, and also a you know, domain controller name, uh, .net, whatever. So this information you need that which OU um, into the uh, Active Directory this is located. Next is you filter like what you're trying to import here. Like the, in this one, uh, SAM account name equals net, um, net ops admins. And uh, this is uh, equals uh, DBA user system. So. Uh, you kind of get this information, uh, what attributes uh, of that uh, uh, a name should be there on the um, Active Directory. Once you know that, then you can pull that information. And then now your group name, uh, like NetApps Admins, is equal to sysadmin. So maybe some other group is equals to something else, you know, uh, maybe your uh, end user, something like that. So you can map them, uh, and it's very handy. Whoever is the user on that your um, uh, OU will be automatically you know have access to that you know that role here. Uh, this needs an upgrade. Okay, now let's go back uh, to the UCS director. Cover these two. Um, now, uh, next two is accounts. Um, as I said, manage um, services like you know uh, UCS, uh, NetApp, Nexus, ACI, all those kinds of are managed services, VMI. So virtual account, you can add anything virtual, which is probably self-explanatory. Uh, in this case, VMI, maybe Hyper-V, maybe KVM. And physical accounts is all about your UCS, storage, uh, you know, Nexus, those kind of things. Um, so um, 
one thing here doesn't mention it's not probably very um, intuitive that uh, physical account here you create this site and pause so um, I would not kind of so nobody will to uh, assume that that's the case like you know where you're going to make the sites um, it's getting a bit slow here um, okay so this is the uh, first thing you do you create a site I remember that uh, guided kind of setup that didn't ask for the you know site but you need to have the site created because the ports are inside this site so um, you create a test site you need a contact name I don't know why so I just created a site and then under this site you can have ports the next tab is ports so you can have a pod and what type of this is important um, uh, remember I was talking about uh, flex pod so if you see flex pod uh, then uh, you choose flex pod, flex pod here and then you choose which site in my case is test site uh, okay and then you address here that site so if you create the flex pod um, and then you have to add these UCS and other systems later uh, from the uh, this site is created this pod is created now if I go back to the converse tab here I'm not sure if it gets confusing now because I'm running from the administration to the converse now because converse is the place actually with you see all your systems so ignore this uh, Sydney one uh, let's just go back to the test one that we just created so this is the pod we created and this is the site test is a site this is the pod and we have not added anything now when you add we will add see all those in a virtual compute network everything here as we add here and how do you add we add through the your administration virtual and physical accounts from these tabs so um, first it doesn't matter it means anyway you can do the uh, your physical and virtual and once you keep adding then you start seeing this this starts populating and it starts talking to the system importing the data it's in mysql database and it populates here so this thing is done for the sydney one so because somebody has already done it so let's have a look there so they have added you know vmware ucs and all those kind of uh, your stuff here so and if you click on that you'd see that the information coming from the you know managed services kind of populates here i would and give a pause right here because it's been getting a bit longer uh, session um i'll uh, kind of make a second session uh, right from here adding the you know virtual and physical devices uh, managed devices thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next session